I'll call this meeting to order at 6.03 p.m. Good evening. I am Fenobia Dallas, chair of the City of Saginaw Planning Commission. This is a regular meeting of the Planning Commission. A public hearing is to address the commission with regard to the subject of the relevant hearing and not to speak on other topics. When the petition, special land use, or site plan approval request in which you are interested is called, please be prepared to speak. Once you are recognized, give your name and address to the staff member for the record. The applicant whose application is the subject of the public hearing or their designated representative shall be the main presenter and will be allowed 10 minutes for their presentation. After the appellant's presentation, others may comment. Again, both speakers shall address their remarks to the commission as a whole and not to individual commission members, city staff, or the audience. Each additional speaker commenting on the subject of the public hearing will be limited to three minutes. Speakers may only speak once on that public hearing. Public comments are permitted during the designated time on the agenda. This allows the public to speak to the Planning Commission about issues of general concern in the community. Once you're recognized, give your name and address to the staff member for the record. Speakers shall address their remarks to the commission as a whole, not to individual commission members, city staff, or the audience. Speakers may ask general or specific questions, and those questions will be referred to city staff for appropriate follow-up. Each speaker is limited to three minutes and may only speak once. Speakers should limit their remarks to business within the jurisdiction of the commission. This meeting is videotaped, so it is important that only one person speak at a time and the audience re observe respect for the speaker. An affirmative vote of the majority of the members present is necessary to grant a petition, special land use, or site plan approval. Recommendations on all petitions, special land uses, or site plans made by the Planning Commission are then forwarded to City Council for disposition. Are there any questions? Staff Zimmerman, will you call the roll, please? <clears throat> Yolanda Bland. Present. Fred Zawerko. Here. Fenobia Dallas. Present. Floyd Clock. John Milne. Brenda Moore. Jack Nash. Present. It's, excuse me, at this point I would like to make a change to the agenda um, before we get to the approval of the minutes. So I want to move that approval of agenda next. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? Can't. No you don't have a quorum, so you can't do any motion. Even to approve to vote. You're right. Okay, I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, we do have an item that does not need a vote. Uh, it is simply a report on a ordinance change that I would ask Staff Golan to make to us for us at this time. Thank you. Um, so recently, uh, phenomena is the increase in uh, solar energy systems. Our zoning ordinance somewhat addresses them just really within the definitions for the most part. Um, and, and also the compliance with the height, sorry, height requirements and uh, projections and yard encroachments. So uh, what, I have, uh, what I'm proposing is for the consideration of uh, a, a zoning ordinance um, addition, which would deal specifically for the solar energy systems. <coughs> so if you're following that report that I provided, we would basically be moving the definition section uh, or the, the items that are referred to within the general definition area and then create uh, a new section called solar energy systems in which it would have its own definitions. And the definitions really help to identify or define the, the components and uh, the development standards within uh, for these. It's just for your information, um, there's really kind of two types of uh, solar energy systems, an accessory type of solar energy system, which would include solar panels on roofs and then mount, uh, ground mounted solar arrays. It could be 
uh, either a single um, panel or, or a, an array of a couple of different panels. Uh, that's the the section, uh, the first section referred to in the for roof mount and an accessory ground mounted systems. The second type of uh, system is what's called a principal use solar energy system, which is basically that's all that's happening on that site. That's the principal use of that site. And so that would include things, smaller um, arrays like um, what you would see, say, um, 10 or 12 panels together, and that would be referred to as typically a solar garden. And then you might have multiple properties put together where you have acres um, and that would be considered what they call like a solar farm. Um, so the first section, the roof mounted and accessory ground mounted um, solar energy systems really kind of deal with the subject of height setbacks and, and things of that nature. Um, we've, we've permitted those in the past. The building inspectors have, have approved roof mounted solar systems so it really isn't much different than the way we do it now it's more formalized though um, in addition though you have the accessory ground mounted systems that might include like oh you'll see solar lights or somebody that maybe has just one panel out there to charge a battery or something to that effect and so those are all considered an accessory use to the primary use of, of a home or a, or a build, business building. And uh, so um, this zoning ordinance um, kind of defines where you can locate those things. Um, so for example, um, since it's an accessory building or a accessory structure, uh, our zoning ordinance states that you can put an accessory structure two feet away from the property line. So, in essence, if you had a pole-mounted solar panel, you would have you would be limited to uh, putting it at least two feet away from the, the property line. Um, some of the exceptions to this would be like low voltage um, landscape lighting and things of that nature. Um, it does require a permit to be. Um, obtained from both the building inspection as well as the electrical inspector. Uh, the zoning ordinance also has a section in there that deals specifically for solar panels and ground mounted structures within historic districts. Um, we, I've sent this to the historic district commission and asked them to comment and um, I got one person from that commission who um, was did not want to allow these at all in the historic district, but however, we've already set precedents there. And so um, I guess it was decided that it's, that's not necessarily a problem. So what we're doing is we're trying to minimize the impact on the historic roof line or obscure the relationship of those within that historic asset. So most of the panels would potentially be mounted on roof areas back behind so you don't see them from the street. And then likewise, the, the pole mounted structures would be kind of placed in the backyard areas to avoid um, impacting the, the historic er character of, of, the, of the property. Um, these all would require uh, historic district commission approval anytime you do anything on the exterior of, of your property within the historic district. So they would still end up reviewing those and making sure that those don't impact. So then the second area is the principal use solar power systems. And then you have really two types, as I mentioned, the small scale principal use ones, which are basically less than or equal to uh, two megawatts production. And those, again, would be considered like what they call a solar garden. Um, you may find businesses that maybe has have an array out in their area um, 
to charge batteries or do something on the, you know, whatever. And then likewise, you could potentially put those on carports and things of that nature. Um, large scale principal use solar uh, energy systems, which would be considered the, um, the solar farms, those are two megawatts or larger. And they could include two individual properties getting together and having this big solar array um, within their properties. We have a few sites within the city that are large enough to probably have something like that. Um, in brownfield site, sites, for example, they can put solar panels there, but they're ballasted, so they just sit on top of the ground, so you're not punching tubes in the ground and, dis and disturbing the soil. Um, the, the zoning ordinance requires uh, screening and landscaping from residential areas. Um, also fencing to, um, for security reasons, dealing with uh, access roads. And then um, part of the, what I believe would be important when you have a large scale system like that is uh, the decommissioning plan that would have to be submitted to the planning commission for approval. And that basically deals with what do you do with those structures once they become obsolete or, or um, inefficient. So we're requiring that, uh, that they have um, these, uh, some sort of a decommissioning plan. And, and it may also include uh, possible bonding to make sure that they have the funds necessary um, once, once it's done. Do you have any questions at this point? about these when you were talking about um, residential um, solar energy systems um, the assumption is that they would be placing the panels on the rear of the roof or if it's going to be pole mounted somewhere in the backyard that correct? would typically be in the historic district area but um, in the residential areas you could put those on your on your roof facing the street yeah, because I was going to ask about um, getting maximum sun. Yeah, absolutely. That's okay. that's the goal. So the restrictions that you're talking about would be mostly concerned with historic districts yeah. in terms of location of the right. panels. Yeah. Okay. The the pole mounted or uh, ground mounted systems, we'd want those in the side or rear yard. That's what's required. We wouldn't want those out in the front yard. Right, right. Unless the exception, again, would be the landscape lighting and things like that, or a, a small... I mean, they, you got small batteries that have solar panels on them now. Mm -hmm. um, you, know, you, you got other little accessory lighting and things of that nature that come with solar panels. So, I mean, again, there's some exceptions to the rules, um, but they're... Primarily um, the low voltage ones. I, I noticed you're talking about low voltage, but you don't really have, and I didn't see it, maybe I missed it, any particular sizing in terms of. Um, I guess width. it's, it's con common standard. Um, so if you go to any home improvement store and you're looking for low voltage lighting, um, I mean, there's sort of a category of that. I can see your point, though, of maybe calling it out. Well, I'm even thinking about uh, solar panels on, on uh, roofs. You know, you don't want the panel hanging off the side uh, of the roof because, you know. Well, no, and again, um, our actual zoning ordinance right now deals with that in terms of encroachments as well as um, placement on, on the roof of um, how far it hangs over the mm -hmm. roof and that sort of thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. That our zoning ordinance deals with that now. Will that be it, tied into this ordinance? Yes. Okay. Yep. So I I I, I took um, it. It makes reference actually. If you go to um, uh, be past the definitions, and you would be in um, the first section: roof mounted and accessory ground mounted um, systems. And I'm on the 153 
A. Point zero five five. C. A, B, and C. Yep. I see yep. that. And it okay. refers to permitted, permitted. height mm -hmm. exceptions and projections. So okay. that's one fifty three zero eight. So, in fact, I think I printed that out. Thank you. Yeah. So, for example, the projection states. Um, Chimneys, flues, cornices, belt cornices, courses, leaders, sills, plaster, lintel, eaves, gutters, ornamental features may project not more than 18 inches into any required yard or court. Okay, thank you. Any other questions on the proposed ordinance? Thank you, staff building. So this is for um, introductory at this point. I've contacted some um, solar industry individuals to get some feedback from them and I have not gotten anything from any of the contacts that I've made. Um, my plan is to bring this back at the January meeting and perhaps hold a public hearing on it as well and then we, we can have more discussion on it. Um, and if we need to tweak it, we could bring it back even into the February meeting, um, adopt it for recommendation to the city council for consideration then. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> uh, another item for your general report is the master plan action plan review. So the report that I submitted to you, um, has the checklist items from the action plan for year one that's listed in this table that looks like this. Mm -hmm. And so I just wanted to bring you up to date on what we are working on to address some of those. Um, we have been in contact with uh, Ms. Evelyn uh, Ravuri from SVSU. Um, she is uh, uh, the professor of geography at the Department of uh, Ge uh, Geography. And um, she has expressed an interest in uh, collaborating with us and bringing some uh, students in to help conduct some data gathering and um, implementation steps as part of the master plan. What we're going to focus in on is the cathedral district if you remember in the cathedral district, the, the area um, there was identified as um, so, something that does not have uh, an associated zoning classification. And um, the idea is potentially, if um, the data um, bears out, we would like to potentially expand the um, riverfront mixed use area. Maybe not call it the riverfront mixed use, but expand uh, mixed uses within those areas. So um, we felt that the Cathedral District um, would be a good start because the association is active. Um, it's uh, somewhat transitional from the downtown commerce area and it's sort of juxtaposed between East Genesee and, and the downtown area. There's some uh, wonderful historic homes back in there. Um, that was again identified in the master plan as an opportunity area. So that needs definition, that, that definition in itself in terms of uh, zoning. And then the Cathedral District meets the definitions outlined in, in the strategy 1.11 and 1.1.3. And then I provided in the task there what um, we would be doing in terms of the scope of work. The second area that we were looking to try and do something with, and I'm not sure that's going to necessarily happen right away, is the Northeast Neighborhood, um, Michigan State uh, Urban and Regional Planning uh, Department has this um, 
practicum where they send um, a junior and senior um, planning students in an area and um, they they could help us we did not meet the first cut but were, was we were given some indication that if more students signed up for this semester for something like that then they might have they might be able to squeeze us in um, the last thing is the iron bell trail um, we've uh, been talking with the saginaw county parks and recreation to do a connector across center street bridge to the um, headwater park that's been developed and then likewise um, at the city council meeting monday night they approved an application for a sparks grant to uh, shape uh, grind and reshape uh, the iron bell trail all the way up to jane street where we so those are the things that we're working on just to kind of bring you up to date on what's happening are you having any uh, difficulty um with the entities that are identified as part of the um, action people looking at your responsibility listing we haven't started working yeah. with the neighborhoods yet January okay but basically but it, you're identifying who would be um, participating in some of these discussions and, and planning. yeah okay yeah so we've been in contact with um, Mr. Ostash uh, regarding the cathedral district and that neighborhood group and so we're going to try and once we get our plan all set to go we're going to meet with those folks and kind of lay out what what we're going to be doing okay thank you mm -hmm. staff Zimmerman, do we now have a quorum Yes, we have a quorum. Thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I told y'all ahead of time. Is there a motion to approve the minutes from September 27th, 2022? So move. move more. Second, Nash. Moved and seconded to approve the minutes from September 27th, 2022. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Thank you. The minutes are approved. Uh, the next item on our agenda is the approval of the agenda. Um, is there a motion to approve the agenda? So move more. Second, Bland. It's been moved and seconded to approve the agenda. Please note that we've already addressed a couple of items already. Um, all in favor of approving the agenda? Aye. 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 Uh, any opposed say nay. Thank you. Agenda is approved. The next item that we have on our agenda is new business. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Doesn't she have to say she's here? No. No, oh, she doesn't. No, it's just I'll it's just recorded minutes. in the minutes. What time? Yeah, she when she yeah. came in. Okay, Madam Chair. Yes. Um, there is has been a recent update to the report that you received for the next item on the agenda. Yeah. That was uh, discovered. Pointed out to me a couple hours. Sleeping. Can you point to me the change? Staff Golan. Staff Golan. Can you, can you? So the, the, the change is, is that um, the, the proposal that we're going to be considering this evening um, is closer to um, Fortney Park than what is allowed. <coughs> and that's pointed out. Um, in, in the within the report so in the the separation distances so that may require or that will require a variance on it thank you uh, the next item on the agenda is new business and we now open the public hearing for the item listed on the agenda uh, this public hearing is for case j22 dash 0171 transfer of a special use permit and site plan approval for a retail marijuana establishment located at 1030 Gratiot. Is the applicant or representative present? 
Please state your name and address, and you have 10 minutes for your presentation. Okay, good evening, everybody. Uh, John Mori with DNF Site Surveying and Engineering, and I'm back in front of you on the site here. Um, three locations, uh, 1030 Gratiot, uh, 1026 Gratiot Avenue, and 1014 Gratiot Avenue. Uh, 1014 is the point, the old Smith Brother hardware store. 1026 is the parking lot, uh, and 1030 is the uh, old Hamilton St Street Bakery. And what we're asking is the transfer of the special use permit that was previously granted to Great Lakes Natural Remedies um, to transfer um, uh, that special use permit over to Premier Provisioning. Um, this is uh, this site was previously approved. Um, oh, back in help me, Bob. Two thousand December fifteenth, two two thousand twenty. Twenty twenty. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah um, and so um, the owner is here, Ray Murad. Um, and the new site plan, um, as you can see, is to um, keep that existing parking lot that's there right now uh, and utilize the Hamilton Street Bakery parcel um, with that point uh, building uh, coming down. And so that's what the site plan in front of you indicates. So if anybody has any questions about anything, I'd be glad to answer them. Is your presentation completed? Yes. All right. Thank you. They can ask questions after the public hearing. Is there anyone else uh, here? Is there anyone here who would like to comment on this case? Please state your name and address. You have three minutes for your comments. My name is Russell Inman. I reside at 110 Braley Street, uh, which is basically across the street from this property. Uh, we are supportive of uh, this project being constructed and that our neighborhood will get some further development. Uh, it's full of light. Uh, although this iteration of the project uh, We'll see different changes than had been previously uh, approved. The uh, previously approved plan would have seen. Uh, it's still drastic improvement in our neighborhood, and uh, we welcome uh, the priority to the neighborhood, and uh, we are fully in support, uh, I, as well as many of my neighbors who I've spoke to. But thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to comment on this case? Please come to the podium. State your name and address, and you have three minutes for Thank your you. comments. Thank uh, you. My name is Bill Ostash. I live in the Cathedral District, and I'll speak in favor of this. Um, it definitely would be a, a definite uh, improvement for that area. I've seen the plans. Um, I like the fact that they've kind of redid some of the um, entryway into the two streets for Brockway and that is there's going to be some grasses and some vegetation in there too. I also like to speak in favor of Premier Provisioning because they are in my neighborhood. They're just a few blocks away and it's been a great business over there. Very quiet. Don't even know they're there. So thank you. Thank you. Please state your name and address. You have three minutes for your comments. Uh, Ray Murad, 4500 Brookstone Drive. And uh, I'm here to I'll uh, bring up a few points about uh, Premier. What we're planning to do is we're going to do a state-of-the-art development in that corner. We're going to do the same thing that we've done on the corner of Genesee and Jane's. Uh, I'm pretty sure you guys seen what that corner looked like before and what it looked like after we opened up Premier there. Uh, we are planning to beautify that corner. Uh, the parking is going to be much easier once that uh, uh, modification is going to happen. The visibility of that corner is going to be much better with that uh, pie looking building out of there. Also just uh, something to bring to your uh, attention. Uh, we will bring a lot of jobs to that corner and we uh, currently at our location we prefer city residents employee they have the upper hand 
as far as coming working for us. And right now, we seventy percent of our employees are city residents. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there anyone else who would like to comment on this case? Is there anyone else who would like to comment on this case? Is there anyone else who would like to comment on this case? Commissioners, do I have a motion to close the public hearing? So move more. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Thank you. The public hearing is closed. Commissioners, is there a motion to approve case J22-0171 transfer of a special use permit and site plan approval for a retail marijuana establishment covering 1014, 1026, and 1030 Gratiot with the conditions that the Board of Appeals on Zoning approves a waiver to the 250 feet separation from the city-owned Fordney Park Two, the applicant secures a business license to operate within the city of Saginaw through the city clerk's, excuse me, through the clerk's office and the state. And three, approval is granted by the city engineering department. So I'll move more. That's a lot of stuff. <laughs> Support plan. Thank you. Uh, it's been moved and seconded to approve. Um, commissioners, are there any questions? I have a question. The, the actual existing building that looks like a little triangle, the triangular building, you're going to renovate that or tear it down or remove it? Um, if you're Polish. addressing, uh, excuse me, okay. if you're addressing the comments to uh, him, I need to take us out of the regular order of business. Oh. But staff might be able to answer yeah. a lot of the questions. Oh, yeah, staff okay. should be All able right. to answer that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be demolished. So, so that's demolished and so is the uh, bakery. Correct. No, no that's, that's staying. That's what where the uh, dispensary is going to oh, be. Oh, okay. I okay. I was confused because I thought that was going. It was look, in the previous application. Okay, but the new one is not. Yes. Okay. And the Get back it now. Of, the back of your report has a rendering of, okay. of what it looked like. Right. Commissioner Moore. Yes. So, Commissioner Moore. Uh, my question is: not tear down the donut shop, right? That we're not tear down the donut shop, right? No. Correct. Okay, so is it going to be a donut shop too? <laughs> yeah, right. No, I'm just joking. Uh, as, as always, I guess I have a question for our staff. Did we know that this variance needed to be before they started this site plan? I'm sorry, say that again. We we just pat well we just talked about it and there was like three conditions. Did we know this prior to or we just caught on that this is what we needed to I, do? I just found out um, it was brought to my attention three hours ago about the variance requirement. Okay, okay. I'm I'm just the, asking the prior site plan that was approved. Right. That where the other building would have been utilized. Right is outside of the sensitive use area. It's okay. just that difference of a few feet. So it's just that bakery, mm -hmm. hidden at bakery. This is there, what they, we're, okay. we're about 40 feet closer to the park now, but just with the 250 the feet. And that's the parking lot, right? Pretty or, much by jumping the parking lot now we're in. The okay. Park. Okay. Thank you. Commissioners, any other questions? Staff Zimmerman, will you take a roll call vote, please? Uh, Commissioner Bland. Support. Commissioner Zawerko. Support. Commissioner Dallas. Yes. Commissioner Moore. Yes. Commissioner Nash. Yes. Motion is approved. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the Approval of the 2022 Planning Commission Annual Report, which is a required, which is required per, per the Michigan Planning Enabling Act 33 of 2008, Section 125.3819. And according to the report, the terms of three members will expire this month. <laughs> is there a motion to approve the City of Saginaw Planning Commission? Um, 
there's not necessarily a need for this to be approved. Mm -hmm. This is something that has been completed every year. Okay. Uh, it's something just for reporting for the city wise. We actually have to have this every year now for our RRC certification. And it's never been brought, you, I don't think it's ever been brought before I, you guys. Seen this. So it's just a summary of everything that has happened between you guys and the Board of Appeals of Zoning um, and any trainings that we've had. This is essentially what we would give to prove that our planning commission is active and doing things. Okay. Thank you. So can um, I ask a question? Yes, you can. So mm -hmm. can we just say we want to file it? Receive and file. <clears throat> I, don't, I don't know if that's really necessary. Receive and file. Sure. I'm asking. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Do a motion to receive and file. I make a motion that we receive and file our planning commission for 2022 annual report. Support. It's been moved and uh, seconded to approve. Uh, excuse me, to receive and file the 2022 master plan. Excuse me, planning commission annual report. Done. Um, the next item on the agenda is the approval of the 2023 meeting calendar. There has you been need to vote. one change. Don't need a vote. vote. You got to vote on the motion. You got to vote on the motion. Oh, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> just got to vote on it. Yes. Do we need a roll call vote or can we just say aye? Just aye. Just aye. Yes. Uh, all in favor of approving the 2023 meeting calendar, please say nope. aye. Nope. Aye. aye. Opposed, say nay. We're back okay. on receive and file still for that. Yeah, we didn't have a vote on the receive and file. Mode. Okay. That was what I was. That'd be complicated. Mm, that's okay. That's why we, we have staff bus to keep us on track. <laughs> Thank you. Um, did I get the right report? Okay, calendar. Um, they have a motion and a second to receive and file the 2022 plan annual report you just need a vote on it. right okay thank you so i understand so we didn't need to receive and file we just need to vote on it because you have a motion and a second you have to vote got it okay uh all in favor of accepting the report aye aye, aye. opposed aye. thank you now you're on your meeting thank you i do um, have one comment about this um this Tuesday meeting in December just did not work out because of the way that holidays are going to be this next year. Mm -hmm. So we are at this point saying we will have no December 2023 meeting. If we have to schedule a special meeting because of a project, we'll, we'll just have to do that. Okay. Uh, so all in favor of uh, the 2023 meeting calendar with the exception of, or excuse me, with the change to the um, cancellation of the December meeting, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Um, next item on our agenda is the public comment. This is the time for public comments, which allows the public to speak to the Planning Commission about issues of general concern in the community. Once you are recognized, give your name and address to the staff member for the record. Dr. Dow. <coughs> I, I apologize. Yes. I know we just took the vote. Was there a motion and a second on it? Do we? I don't think so. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Yes, this is the uh, calendar. 2023 meeting calendar. Is there a motion to approve the 2023 meeting calendar? <coughs> motion to approve. Second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded to approve the uh, 2023 Saginaw Planning Commission planning calendar or meeting calendar. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, please say nay. <coughs> Thank you. Now we're back on track. Next item on agenda is our public comment. Again, this is the time for public comments, <coughs> which allows the public to speak to the Planning Commission about issues of general concern in the community. Once you are recognized, give your name and address to the staff member for the record. Speakers shall address their remarks to the Commission as a whole. Each speaker is limited to, two, to, limited to three minutes and may only speak once. Speakers should limit their remarks to business within the jurisdiction of the commission. Is there anyone here who wishes to address the commission about issues of general concern in the community? That's good. Is there anyone here who wishes to address the commission about issues of general concern in the community? 
Please state your name and address, and you have three minutes. Okay, Bill Ostash again, uh, 1000 Hoyt Avenue in the Cathedral District. Um, I found it uh, very enlightening tonight to see that the Planning Commission is going to be looking to the master plan, some of the items that Mr. Gollin had talked about for, the, for my neighborhood. Um, matter of fact, I just had a conversation with one of the residents on the way over here. So um, talking to the neighbors and talking about this at our Neighborhood Association meeting, there's been a lot of support for uh, what is being proposed to come with mixed-use neighborhoods uh, back in the Without going back into the records, I believe it was in the 1960s that was planning planning commission that was was told to me. I cannot adhere to that, but um, mixed use neighborhoods where we had stores and stuff were taken away, and it was basically just residential. So with this opportunity, uh, neighbors are excited to see the possibility of uh, little stores coming back, maybe uh, laundry mats or whatever we have. But also in my neighborhood too, I do want to make. Um, Note that we have a very uh, important family that lives in that neighborhood, and the last name is Mudd. So we all know the story on the Mudd family, and there's a, a lot of uh, history with that home. So we're, we're looking to actually uh, hoping to come up with a solution where that home can be uh, protected in some sort of a way, where it's not uh, cut up into multi-unit. So uh, we're excited. Uh, Bob, I look forward to hearing from you. You brought my name up tonight, so we'll be uh, talking uh, more on this project. And so that's what I want to say. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to address the commission about issues of general concern in the community? Is there anyone here who wishes to address the commission about issues of general concern in the community? Is there anyone else who wishes to address the commission about issues of general concern in the community? Thank you. Uh, the next item on our agenda is old business. Is there any unfinished business? Um, we don't have a spot here, but I'd like to uh, make an announcement. Um, um, I'd like to thank the members of the commission for graciously welcoming me to this body um, barely three years ago. Um, we've accomplished much during my time here. Um, however, at this time, I'm returning to the classroom as a student to pursue a master's in public administration um, and preparing for a new role at Saginaw Valley State University. I have enjoyed my time being on the Planning Commission, and I look forward to working with you um, in many, many projects as we plan to revitalize and renew Saginaw. Thank you. Um, do I have a motion? Sorry. I think that's what she said. What did you just do? Uh, I just said that I'm moving on to go back to school. So you're leaving us? So you yes, ma'am. Well, I don't think she resigned. Her I didn't resign. I'm just telling you right now what I'm doing. And so when that he hasn't reapplied when that comes through, yeah. I just wanted some clarity, okay? Because mm -hmm. that's what I thought I heard. Yes, I just wanted to make sure. Yes, ma'am. Her term is up at the end of this month, yes. and she's not going to be reapplying. Yeah, who's on the? We will talk about that. We will have discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do I have a motion for adjournment? Motion to adjourn. Support. It's been moved and seconded to adjourn. All in favor, please aye. say aye. Aye. Apparently Post. right on time. Just on time. <laughs> Why I keep aye. going off? Because I keep hitting it to go off. <laughs> <laughs> Meeting us adjourned.